eViews has allowed estimation of structural vector autoregressions, SVARs, for over 20 years. SVARs are used extensively in macroeconomics as a method of analyzing policy decisions. One of the key elements behind SVAR estimation is the necessary imposition of restrictions on the residual structural matrices. These restrictions generally take the form of restrictions on the factorization matrices, A and B, restrictions on the short-run impulse response matrix, S, or restrictions on the long-run impulse response matrix, F or C, or a combination of the above. Previous versions of eViews only allowed restrictions on A and B or on F. eViews 10 broadens the restriction engine by allowing restrictions on any of the four matrices, adding linear restrictions, and adds a new interface allowing easier specification of the restrictions. To demonstrate this new feature, I'm going to be working with a few examples taken from the textbook Econometric Modeling with Time Series by Martin, Hearn and Harris, 2013. The first example is example 14.13 in the book and is working with instantaneous one month and three month US coupon yields. We have monthly data from 1947 to 1991 and we'll first estimate a standard VAR with one lag. I can estimate the structural form of the VAR by clicking on PROC Estimate Structural Factorization. This brings up the SVAR Options dialog. The first page allows us to impose restrictions. We have a number of options for doing so. The combo box at the top allows us to change the way we enter the restrictions. We can choose from one of the predefined restrictions or specify restrictions by text or completely custom. Following the book, we're going to impose short run restrictions on both the A and B matrices. Specifically, we're going to impose diagonality on the B matrix and diagonality on the A matrix with the exception of two free parameters in the lower section. We'll do this by selecting the recursive factorization predefined setting, then modifying it slightly by restricting one of the lower parameters in A to be zero, leaving B as the predefined diagonal matrix. will impose no direct restrictions on S or F. Clicking OK produces the results. The top part of the results describes what we did, including the restrictions we placed on the matrices. Beneath that, we have the estimated coefficients, the free parameters in the matrices, and then we have finally the estimated matrices themselves. Note that even though we specify the restrictions in terms of A and B, eViews reports the calculated coefficients for all four matrices. As a second demonstration, we'll move on to example 14.14 from the same book. This example starts with the same data, but this time estimates the VAR in differences. This time we are going to impose restrictions on the long run F matrix rather than A or B. I'm going to specify the matrix using a text representation. I type in at vec of F to show I'm listing the vect elements of the F matrix. Clicking OK again produces the results we want. Again, we see the restriction we specified at the top, followed by the estimated parameters, and then finally the computed matrices. Note that the restrictions on F imply an S can be imputed, but it is not possible to decompose an A or a B. The third demonstration is taken from section 14.6.1 of the Martin, Hearn and Harris book. Here, we're using quarterly macroeconomic data, namely oil prices, US output, interest rates, and the US Consumer Price Index. The underlying VAR is a three lag model using growth rates or D logs for oil prices, 
output and CPI and levels of the interest rates. We'll use a time trend as an exogenous variable. To specify the SVAR, we're going to impose restrictions such that oil shocks only affect oil prices in the short run, interest shocks don't affect output in the short run, and inflation and interest shocks don't affect output in the long run. We can do this by mixing restrictions on both S and F. To specify the oil short run restrictions, I specify that the output, inflation and interest columns of S are zero. To specify that interest shocks don't affect output, I set the interest output entry to zero. Finally, to specify the long run restrictions, I set the CPI and interest columns of output to zero in the F matrix. Note that specifying these long run restrictions in F is equivalent to imposing more complicated linear restrictions on S. Clicking OK to produce the output reveals similar output to the other models. Note, however, that eViews has reported both the specified restrictions of S and F, as well as the linear restrictions in S implied by the given restrictions of F. Our final demonstration comes from section 14.6.3 of the book, and again handles some macroeconomic variables, but this time from Australia. We have quarterly real GDP growth, interest rate growth, return on Australian equities, inflation rate growth, and return on US equities. We'll estimate a VAR with two lags and a couple of date-based dummy variables as exogenous variables. When we estimate the structural factorization, we will impose a number of long-run restrictions, including the restriction that financial assets are priced in the long run at present values, which transfers into the restriction that the 3-2 element of the F restriction matrix is equal to the negative of the 2-2 element. We'll first impose the zero restrictions by starting with one of the preset options for F, then modifying it slightly. To impose the equality, we'll add a further text-based restriction. The output again displays our restrictions and the estimated parameters. Note that the estimated co coefficients do indeed follow the equality restriction we imposed.